Story recapped here. Today I'm going to explain a horror and thriller film called The Belko Experiment. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. In the busy streets of Bogota, Mike Melch, an employee of Belko Industries, makes his way to work after being stopped by a vendor who sells handmade dolls. To drive the vendor away, he buys one from him. Also on the way, his workmate Barry Norris arrives at the headquarters of the company in Bogota, Colombia. Belco is a non-profit organization that facilitates American companies in South America in the hiring of American workers. The unfamiliar guard asks Barry to hand over his ID, to which he abides. Then the guard checks the trunk of his car to continue security measures when a local employee from behind is sent home. Barry asks about it, but the guard completely ignores him. After the strict inspection that morning, the ones who got through it go about their workday. The office is just like any other, employees are assigned in sections, and the busy hours start as usual. A new employee in the company named Denny Wilkins starts her first day, so Vince, a higher executive, gives her a brief walkthrough of the company. He also asks Denny if she has been to the doctor to have a tracker implanted in the base of her skull. All employees have trackers placed in their heads for the higher executives to assure their safety and monitor them due to the high number of kidnappings in Colombia. After their short meeting, Vince officially welcomes her to the company. In the office, an employee named Leandra Flores is constantly harassed by Wendell Dukes, their workmate, who always makes her uncomfortable. That day, he stares at her while she works at her station. She notices him and messages him to stop staring. Before her mood worsens, Mike makes her laugh by showing her the doll he bought earlier and displaying it on her desk as a gift. The two are currently in a relationship, as Leandra is in the process of getting divorced. Meanwhile, Annie finds extreme pressure in the company, given that she is a new member. The supervisor gives her an excessive workload which shocks her. After the supervisor leaves, she becomes acquainted with Roberto and Liotta, who have been employees at Belco. They also introduce her to Bradley, who is a good-looking workmate of theirs. Before entering his office, Mike talks to Terry, another colleague, who informs him that the workplace isn't as packed because the local workers were sent home. Weirded by it, Mike notices a guard with heavy equipment from his office window. He is curious to find the reason for the security replacement, so he calls Evan Smith, the head security guard who also has no idea behind it. Out of nowhere, a voice on the intercom asks all employees to lend in their attention. The voice announces that there are currently 80 employees inside the building and that in 8 hours, most of them will be dead. According to him, their chances of survival will increase if they follow his orders. Mixed emotions are felt by people in the office, as some think it is some prank, and to some, it is disturbing. The first task that the voice says is to murder any two of your fellow employees within the next half hour, how they are killed or how they are chosen to be killed is of no consequence. The voice adds that they will face repercussions if there are no two dead bodies in the next 30 minutes. As a higher executive, Brent heads to the control room to check who is responsible for the announcement but finds that the room is empty. In a slight panic, one of the employees says that all the telephone lines are dead, but Barry helps the others calm down. At Mike's section, he instructs his subordinates to evacuate the floor calmly, but Keith, one of the employees, assumes that the announcement is just a practical company prank. As one employee makes her way to the elevator, Mike tells her to take the stairs instead because it would be less risky. A woman in the lobby tries to run outside of fear, but metal enclosures appear and cover the whole building. Sunlight is blocked, and the entire building turns slightly dim as the employees realize that something more serious is going on. At the moment, Belko looks more like a prison than an office building, the once lively working space has become a secluded and dangerous place. All of the employees gather in the lobby, where Evan is currently receiving all the complaints and blame, but he repeatedly says that he is just as clueless as they are. Two maintenance men, Bud and Lonnie make their way to the lobby as well, where Mike asks them if it is possible to cut through the metal enclosures, to which he replies that they could give it a try. Meanwhile, Barry enters the lobby, and in an attempt to calm everyone down, he says that the building is safe and that someone is having fun playing a prank. Keith and his friends make their way to the roof to know more about the situation, where they see Marty and his friend smoking, completely unbothered by the situation. The annoyed Leandra warns them about the company finding out, while Keith realizes that the building is in the middle of nowhere, surrounded by greens and animals. Bud and Lonnie try to melt the metal back in the lobby, but they are unsuccessful at it, they even have difficulty identifying what kind of metal it is. In the corner of the room, Mike expresses his concerns to Barry and Wendell about the situation not being a prank but a rather dangerous one. According to him, the cell signal, the metal walls, and the new guards from that morning are signs that they are being set up. Barry says that his conspiracy will cause further panic and continues to dismiss his thoughts. On the rooftop, the group spots a guard by the entrance, and they try to call his attention to ask for help. However, the guard is completely unbothered by their calls for help and continues to sip his drink in a sinister way. Marty approaches them to say that they should chill and relax because it may be a psychological test conducted by the company. As he speaks, one of his friends feels a painful sensation in her head, and in a split second, her head explodes, causing her instant death. The sight of it puts everyone in a state of panic, and Marty realizes that he should be scared indeed. 
In the lobby, another employee explodes before a man shouts that someone is shooting at them. All the other unharmed employees take cover and hide in the rooms after another one explodes. In an attempt to be safer, some even take the elevator. Puzzled by the situation, Barry examines one of the dead bodies and discovers that bullets are not the cause of the deaths but an explosion from inside their heads. Mike thinks that the trackers implanted in their heads are explosives that could be used to control them. Mike storms to the bathroom to try and cut his using a box cutter, only for the voice to speak and command him to stop trying to take it out, or they will detonate it on their own. All bloody, Mike stops at the last second as Leandra begs him to stop. Mike's secretary, Peggy, stitches up his wounds while Wendell follows Leandra to the kitchen to annoy her again. He acts in a predatory manner, which she is sick of, making her walk away. While hiding in a room, Terry and another employee find hidden cameras in the frame and ceiling, realizing that the ones responsible for the scheme have been watching them way before. A concerned Evan sits by the lobby when Barry approaches him to hand him a bottle of water. He tries to talk his way for Evan to hand him the keys to the armory, where guards keep their weapons. Completely aware of his intentions, Evan refuses to give Barry any authority to enter the armory despite being his boss. Meanwhile, Denny hides in the basement when Bud and Lonnie make their way down to further inspections on how they could control the power. The voice communicates again through the intercom, reminding everyone that the game is serious, and it is up to them to follow or not, at the expense of their lives. It further says that cameras should not be dismantled, and the trackers should remain in their heads. If any of them break the rules, their life will end abruptly. 76 employees remain alive at the moment. According to the voice, it is demanded that the employees kill 30 among them within two hours through any means necessary, or 60 will be killed. Everyone is unsafe at the moment, and they all begin to panic. In the basement, Lonnie sobs out of fear, and as Bud tries to approach and comfort him, he pushes him away, thinking that Bud would hurt him. He begins to get paranoid as the game progresses, causing him to doubt his friend. In the company kitchen, Wendell gathers sharp weapons, which causes a commotion among the group. It pauses when Barry enters the room to try and control the situation, but they continue to grab the knife and walk away. Back in the basement, Lonnie is freaking out as Bud tries to assure him that they will stick together. Bud gets too close to him, and Lonnie reacts by hitting Bud in the head with a wrench, leaving a massive dent in Bud's head as he dies gradually. Unknowingly, Denny witnesses the murder of Bud as Lonnie cries beside him out of regret. Moments later, Lonnie notices Denny from a distance and tries to stop her from telling anyone, so he grabs her, and in the act of self-defense, she kicks herself back, which causes Lonnie to hit his head into a metal bar, killing him. Denny looks at him in horror but runs away after realizing what she has done. Multiple employees argue on which course of action to take in the cafeteria, causing them to split into two factions. One is led by Mike, who thinks that there should be no killings, and one led by Barry, who wishes to follow the directions to save himself from being detonated. The group consists of him, Terry, and two other employees, Antonio and Bradley. The four of them use a blowtorch to burn off the lock of the armory to have access to weapons when Mike, Leandra, and Evan find out about their plan. They try to stop Barry's group, but they are confident of getting a hold of the weapons. Desperate to put an end to their plan, Evan takes out a gun and points it at the group, but he relents and lets them continue. Mike takes Evan's gun and shoots the blowtorch tank before he leaves with Leandra and Evan. It triggers the group to avenge Mike for stopping their evil plan. In a tight race with time, Mike's group tries to hang banners from the roof to let people outside know that they are being held hostage. However, guards stationed at the entrance shoot at them mercilessly, but they continue their attempt. Keith is hurt in the process as one of the bullets hits his hand. The voice demands them to stop hanging up signs, or their explosives will go off. Determined to get help, Mike continues to put another banner, but other employees restrain him from straying him away from harm. They eventually give up and go back inside, Mike tells Leandra that the government might be behind the killings, but she assures him that it is not. While they make their way down, Barry's group ambushes the group in the stairway, pushing Mike and killing Evan, giving them a chance to take his keys to the armory. They gather weapons before selecting people and putting them all in one common area. The employees hiding in the basement even get captured by Bradley, he sees Denny hiding in one corner but lets her stay there out of sympathy. She feels relieved more than ever. Meanwhile, Mike gains consciousness and sees poor Evan, who has now bled to death. Just as he gets up, Wendell captures and brings him to the lobby along with the others. Barry and his group begin to group people according to whether or not they have kids or are over the age of 60. Everyone fears the situation, Terry tries to talk to Barry, but he is determined to kill 30 people as they are down to 20 minutes before the deadline. He randomly picks people to be executed, and when one man refuses, Wendell shoots him three times, causing a big commotion. The noise from the lobby alarms Danny, urging her to do something to help her friends upstairs. She walks along a hallway, where a staircase leads to the lobby. After seeing the situation upstairs, she goes back to the basement, which serves as her safe space. Barry chooses Mike to be part of the ones they would execute, he makes them all kneel facing the wall as Antonio puts music on the radio. He shoots the people one by one as Wendell keeps track of the number of lives taken. Just as Mike is about to get shot, then he shuts down the power, causing the lights to turn off. The employees quickly run for cover as Barry and his group start firing, killing several more people. Inside an elevator, Roberto tries to climb on the elevator shaft. Upon the doors being opened, he sees Denny alone, so he calls her for them to team up. The whole building is in complete chaos, as everyone is desperate to survive. 
Bradley gets ganged up by a group of workers in the basement, while Antonio gets stabbed by Peggy in a brawl by the staircase. In a disturbing tone, the voice announces that only 29 people are killed, which means that they are short with one life, and in two minutes, 30 more will die. Barry and his group scour through the rooms to kill one more. Terry looks for someone he could shoot down, little does he know, Leandra is hiding under a table. When he passes by, she uses a knife to cut his leg, causing him to accidentally let go of his weapon. Ready to beat him to death, she stops after his pleas for her to spare him. Unfortunately, the voice announces that the time is over and that 31 employees will now be eliminated. To Leandra's horror, she witnesses Terry explode while other employees start to die one by one as well. Their faces are filled with fear and uncertainty, as they are left with no choice but to hope for their safety. In a control room, a person operates a machine that controls who gets to live and who dies, which means that their fate lies in a single button that has their name. As people explode, Marty stands still, saying that everything is just a product of his imagination, and cries. After the random selection, the explosions stop, and the voice continues to let the surviving players know that the last stage of the game will start. Whoever has killed the most people will be allowed to live, the tally is announced, Barry with 11 kills, Wendell with 7 kills, Vince and Denny with 1 kill each. With this, Barry's group continues to hunt down employees and start killing them off. Barry's secretary tries to seduce him in the lobby just so she could be saved, but instead of comforting her, Barry breaks her neck instead after saying that he would not waste a bullet on her. He then enters the elevator, where Denny and Roberto are hiding. After noticing their voices, he shoots in their direction but misses. Denny manages to jump out of the shaft, but the poor Roberto gets left behind and is crushed to death in his attempt to escape. This causes the elevator to shut down, which entraps Barry inside. Leandra finds collecting the UN exploded trackers from the heads of people who have died by other methods. They tell her that they plan to use them to blow up the wall, which she thinks is a good idea. She uses another intercom to let Mike, who is hiding in a locked office, know that she needs him and that she is on the first floor. Mike decides to come to Leandra's rescue, as he comes downstairs, he finds Liesel, a cafeteria lady, and brings her with him. Moments after, Leandra finds Wendell butchering an employee, which triggers her to kill him after months of him harassing her in the office. Unfortunately, Marty and his friend get shot after trying to help Leandra reach Wendell. She manages to grab the axe and kill him brutally, leaving the final six survivors, Vince, Mike, Barry, Danny, Leandra, and Liesel. When Leandra and Mike reunite, she shows him the explosives that Marty has collected, but out of nowhere, Liesel gets burned to death after Vince throws a bottle of lit gasoline on her. The two run away after being chased by two men, but in the process, Leandra gets shot. Barry shoots Vince and Denny, who just got out of the elevator shaft, to keep up with his tally. With her dying breath, Leandra proclaims her love to Mike after he brings her to an empty room. She falls unconscious, which causes Mike to be in a fit of rage. He starts a brutal fight with Barry, in which Barry gets the better of him at first. After some time, Mike fends Barry off using a tape dispenser, which ends in Mike bludgeoning Barry to an awful death. He looks at him with hate and lands his final hits, making him the sole survivor. The voice announces him as the winner, and two guards bring him out after they unseal the building. Mike's body is about to give up on him, but the two guards force him to enter a hangar next to the building. In there, he comes face to face with the owner of the voice, who says that they're part of an international organization that studies human behavior unfettered by conventional concepts. As he and his colleagues begin to interview Mike about his emotional and mental state after the experiment, Mike notices a panel of switches corresponding to the 80 employees. He then reveals to the voice that he planted the trackers that Marty collected on the guards and the owner of the voice, which means that they could explode. Quickly, Mike runs to flips every remaining active switch except his own, making the trackers explode. The owner of the voice attempts to appeal to his moral beliefs, but Mike kills him out of anger. In a state of shock, he leaves the hangar, slightly relieved. Suddenly, multiple monitors reveal that the experiment is conducted in various buildings, showing that Mike is just one of many sole survivors from similar experiments, being watched by another group. All of a sudden, another voice announces, commence stage 2. The experiment is far from over, and what seemed to be the worst is only the beginning of something more vile and evil. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.